Hey guys, this is the second segment of the plate tectonics and I had last time I stopped at the oceanic continental plate boundary and I was telling you about how the continental plate is lighter than the oceanic. Remember it's 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter. So when the two gets together, the continental plate cannot ever go down, remember, because it's lighter. So the one which is going down is going to be the oceanic. So as the magma melts, the island is always going to be on land. Don't forget that. The island is always going to be on land. Not the island, sorry, the volcano, of course. So here we are, the oceanic. This is underwater, right here. Oceanic plate is going down. And remember, this is the lithosphere plate, lithosphere plate. And the continental plate stays up, never, never can go down, don't forget. And uh, the magma is coming up and makes the volcanic arc, and it's always going to be on the continent. The trench is, of course, right here. So, oceanic continental plate boundary. The best example is the Andes. Uh, just remember that if I do the matching, then oceanic continental has to be matched to the Andes. Uh, this here is the black diagram, diagram if you want, um, shows the exact same thing, so here we are. And that here is the uh, real example, and as you can see, um, the Pacific Ocean is going under right here, and this here is the trench right here, and this here is the volcanic arc right here. So you know if there are earthquakes and volcanoes in South America, Western South America, America, the reason for it is because it's an oceanic continental plate boundary. Remember the Pacific Ocean, the Pacific Ocean is what's going down right here. So that's uh, oceanic continental plate boundary. Best example is the Andes. And here we are at the very last one, the, uh, the, the plate boundary when two continents uh, gets together. And remember, both of them are 2.27 gram per cubic centimeter. So which one can go down? Can anybody go down? No. And they're being pushed together. So the only way they can go is, remember, it's going to go up. The only way they can go is up. Now, remember right before, it become continent continent it was oceanic continent so so the continent stayed the ocean it could go down and as you can see it's still the remnants of the oceanic crust is still here however it's all kind of getting to be gone and the oceanic crust with the oceanic crust is making the mountain right here so one of the best examples for this is the the uh, Himalaya, which is India colliding by, with Asia, Himalaya and Asia, and the other one is the Alps, and in the Alps it's um, Europe and Africa. So the other good example is the Alps and the collision with the verb for colliding or continent, continent plate boundaries, colliding, collision. And Alps is a very good example where uh, Africa and Europe is colliding together. The Himalaya is a very good example. And in the Himalaya, it's India colliding with Asia right here. So if you have earthquakes anywhere around here, the reason for those is because it's a continent continent plate boundary. The third kind of plate boundary is the so called transform. When you got a transform plate boundary, the main thing is that it's along the mid oceanic ridge always. And the mid oceanic ridge is not one straight line, it has this so called strike slip faults along it which makes it a uh, transform plate boundary. In, in that case, the plates are just sliding next to each other like that, you see? So there is no vertical movement. It's strictly horizontal, they're sliding. See, that's right here, it's happening right here. So this is the mid-oceanic ridge, and it's actually transformed over 
and now it's continuing right here and it happened along this transform plate boundary. Now if you look at this next slide right here, you can see that this here is the Holland Fuca plate and this is going underneath of Oregon and Washington so therefore it's an oceanic continental plate and uh, the mid-oceanic ridges are right here and it has a bunch of transform plate on the one here the other one is here just about every time you got this uh, mid-oceanic ridge it will have a bunch of transform plate boundaries uh, one of the best examples for transform plate boundaries is the San Andreas Fault. As you can see, it goes right here. It comes in around San Francisco and it goes right there. And um, Los Angeles is on Los Angeles is Los Angeles is on the Pacific Plate right here. And the Pacific Plate is moving to the north. San Francisco, on the other hand, is on the uh, North American plate and it's going down south so therefore if you wait for a while the two cities will be next to each other so it's kind of interesting this here is the aerial view of the San Andreas if you fly over you can actually see the San Andreas fault the last thing we have to talk about is the hotspot volcanoes the hotspot volcanoes are In the mantle, if you think about it, there are areas where uh, the radioactive elements are more uh, collected. You know, they are not distributed evenly. There are places where we have more of them. Wherever we have more of them, there is more heat generating, being generated, I should say. And wherever the heat is generated, you will get actually a volcano because the the magma uh, is less dense when it's melted so it's gonna come up comes through the the crust and makes a so-called hotspot volcano one of the best example of hotspot volcano is Hawaii right there Hawaii now you can imagine as there is the hotspot right here where is my hand right here that's weird here is the camera so that's the hot spot and the oceanic crust is moving I have to move this way I have to learn how to do this so here is the hot spot hot spot yeah <laughs> and here is the the oceanic plate so if you think about it, the oceanic plate is being pushed is being pushed so therefore it somewhat goes over the hot spot and wherever the hot spot is that's where you're gonna have a uh, hotspot volcano so basically what you have to have is a chain of volcanoes right here where only the one over the hotspot is active so all these other volcanoes are not active they were active before and here you can see this is the plate movement and this is the the volcanoes the chain of volcanoes and Hawaii right now the big island is the last one uh, it's exactly above the hotspot right now so that's the only one which is active now all the other ones are not at this shows you a very interesting situation when the when uh, the Pacific Ocean came under North America a good bunch of millions of years ago it produced all this volcanic field this was like a so-called uh, flood basalt but then as it goes further in under the continent actually it starts to make more dangerous volcanoes see you can see how the hotspot moved underneath of North America and the age of these volcanoes are older and it's going younger 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 and right now it's underneath of Yellowstone and it produced three major eruption one 2.1 million years ago another one uh, 1.2 and then there is there was one six hundred thousand uh, years ago. So scientists believe that that um, it's almost like overdue, and it is a super volcano. So it's late. I was watching tennis match. I shouldn't have. So um, this volcano is a super volcano because as as the magma chamber is a hot spot underneath. 
but it has to melt through the whole continent. And as it does, it produces a very, very explosive volcano. And a whole lot of material came out at the very last eruption. So the caldera, which is the top of the volcano, is huge. It's like 50 miles wide. So because of the size of it, we call it a super volcano. If that erupts, North America is going to be in trouble. This is how it looks like underneath of Yellowstone. So you can see this is about 550 miles, at least 50. 50 miles. And the magma chamber is right under. And this is what heats up all the, all the water, um, the hydrothermal um, activities like the geysers, the hot springs, all that stuff. Is just from this. You know, the magma chamber is so close to the surface that it actually heats up the whole area. So, we just finished the different types of plate boundaries. Remember, divergent, convergent. Inside the convergent, you have to know all three kinds. Like, remember, one was oceanic, oceanic, oceanic continental, and continent, continent. And the, the last one is the transform plate boundary. And don't forget, you have to know about the hotspot volcanoes, also hotspot. Okay, so we have this really cool slide which shows you the different plate boundaries. See? Right here, the different color shows the different plate boundaries. And uh, the red shows the, the, red shows the uh, divergent plate boundaries. You can clearly see right here the the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, the East African Rift Basin. This is a divergent plate boundary. And of course, every mid-oceanic ridge is divergent plate boundary. So we have, um, like you see, we have in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean a divergent plate boundary. And as you can see, we have a divergent plate boundary in the Pacific Ocean. But compare this in the Atlantic Ocean it's absolutely symmetrical both sides is exactly the same say, everywhere see so it's the the mid oceanic ridge is exactly in the middle the Atlantic Ocean is a growing ocean and this area this area and this area is a passive margin however if you look at the Pacific Ocean the mid oceanic ridge actually is going where does it go look where is it going as the, as the Pacific Ocean is going under North America, the mid-oceanic ridge actually going under also. So this is what's really, really interesting because this makes the, the part of North America to be almost like a divergent plate boundary because the mid-oceanic ridge is going under right there. Up here, it's typical oceanic continental plate boundary because it, of this uh, Juan de Fuca place and then you know, California is a typical transform plate boundary. And I also have this right here, where actually the yellow shows the transform plate boundary, red is the divergent, and the blue is convergent plate boundary. So we just went through this, you, you could see it. And this very last one is probably the most interesting because what this shows, it shows the age of the oceanic crust, the age of the oceanic crust, the blue being 200 million and the red me being, the red being uh, today. So the blue is 200 million, red is today. And if you look at the Atlantic Ocean, see the blues are in the right here, that's blue. And the red is the middle, middle, sorry, I messed up. The Atlantic Ocean, as you can see, absolutely symmetrical with the blues on the sides, the red is in the middle all the way around. So this ocean is a beautiful growing ocean. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the Pacific Ocean, the red is going under, as I just told you, North America. So you can see that uh, basically half of, and the blue is only here, no blue anywhere else. So basically, if you look at this picture, half of the Pacific Ocean is missing. What happened to it? And of course, you know, because it went under, it went under North America, South America, everywhere. 
so it's still working but it's um one side of it is completely gone so this makes it really interesting plate tectonics is just so amazing it explains everything and remember uh the alps is the right here the right here the alps it is the collision between africa and asia and the mediterranean doesn't even have uh oceanic crust anymore it's basically gone so so Africa is going this way and Asia is coming this way and the Atlantic Ocean is opening so therefore the Pacific Ocean is big time shrinking uh, I hope you enjoyed play tectonics and it's very important that you do know this I will ask it all the time no excuse not knowing it you got to know it and uh, I will see you in minerals bye